okay guys um, I'm here to take you through the nursing care plan so how to go about a nursing care plan and especially if you are a student from Ghana how to go about your nursing care plan okay so as you can see this is the front page of the nursing care plan so there's a front page and this is the middle part um, the middle page of the nursing care plan and this is where you actually do most of the work this is where you actually do most of the work okay and finally the last page um, and here it talks about medications and other treatments investigations etc okay so this back page um, contains a total mark of two so if you're able to fill this part correctly you have two marks okay and if you're able to fill the front page correctly you have six marks the middle page is 12 marks so that's why i told you this place entails a lot so 12 marks okay so let's dive straight into how to go about your nursing care plan now the front page is very easy you get all the details from the patient and from the patient's folder from the patient and from the patient's folder okay so if this was your exam you write your index number here so your index number will be there now these uh, information you get from the patient folder so patient name let's say mr michael okay an inpatient number okay um in the hospital they have these numbers they assign to the patient um it could be the insurance number etc but they have a number they assign to the patient so let's say two eight five seven and maybe 21 let's say the patient was admitted in 2021 so something like that then the age of the patient so let's say mr michael here is 30 years and mr michael obviously okay is a male so male okay and occupation what job is mr michael doing okay so let's say he's a mechanic okay now the physician or the surgeon at this part um you write the doctor taking care of this patient okay it's mostly in the patient folder okay so and also with the physician sometimes it's not just one physician it's a team let's say you when you've ever um been to cat confinement teaching hospital you realize that they don't come in isolation the physician they come as a team maybe uh, medical team a medical team b surgical team a surgical team b etc so let's say this physician here is a soloist so let's say dr aquasi dr aquasi is taking care of mr michael also now date of admission is always found in the folder so and also in the nurse's note so maybe let's say 12th of um april 2021 now let's move on to this part this part okay so we have ward so what ward is mr michael also in so it could be a medical unit or a surgical unit okay so let's go with um medical medical okay and the bed number every patient has a bed number so let's say bed three okay the religion you can ask this information from mr Wusu, uh, and he will gladly tell you so let's say mr Wusu here is a christian and the diagnosis it's always in the folder it's always in the folder okay and um if you are not 
quite um, acquainted with the medical term. Whenever you see a triangle, it represents a diagnosis. So let's say the doctor won't just write the full diagnosis here. Um, you just draw a triangle. It's the same thing. It's referring to the diagnosis. So let's say Mr. Ousu here is diagnosed with um, jaundice. And maybe it's a multiple diagnosis. Okay. So jaundice and let's say hepatomegaly. Okay, now operation. If Mr. Osu here has undergone any surgical operation, you write the type of operation he uh, he did. Okay, but if there is no operation, you just write not yet done, not yet done. So let's say Mr. Michael has um, been to the surgical unit and had this operation. So we just write um, the type of operation that he did. And all this information can be obtained from the folder. Okay. So let's say Mr. Owusu here hasn't been to the surgical um, unit for any operation or the theater for any operation. So you just write, not yet done. Now, on date of discharge, we are still in the world with Mr. Owusu. So we just write, not yet because he hasn't been discharged okay so not yet okay now let's move on to these parts so gradually we are making progress okay patient problems so at this point this is what the patient tells you the complaints of the patient and what you as a nurse observed so here we have um, the objective data and the subjective data. The subjective data is just the information the patient will give to you. And the objective data is what you as a nurse can obtain through measurement, observation, etc. Okay, so let's say patient problems. Mr. Osu can tell you what's wrong with him. So let's move on to what Mr. Osu said. So patient and that's how we write it to do patient complaints of pain in the abdomen okay that's the first one patient complaints of sleepless nights so I have two um, subjective data from the patient so um the next thing I'm, I'm going to do is to add my own objective data so that you know how um we write these different scenarios when it comes to writing the patient problems so patient complaints of pain in the abdomen patient complaints of sleepless nights okay my own objective data patient is anxious the next one, patient has inadequate knowledge. About disease condition. Okay, so these are the patient problems. These are the patient problems. The first two are subjective data, data obtained from the patient. The next two are objective data, data obtained from my own observation 
and some measurements okay now let's probe further into the patient problem you see i wrote pain in the abdomen first followed by sleepless night followed by anxious followed by inadequate knowledge about disease condition okay so this is it you don't just write patient problems it has to be stated in order of importance in order of um, relevance in order of severity so the most severe ones comes first and when it comes to pain pain is the most severe of everything of every patient complaints aside let's say the patient is not breathing that one is an emergency please I hope you are following so pain comes first followed by sleepless night followed by anxiety and followed by inadequate knowledge mostly knowledge and education is the last thing to do for the patient knowledge and education they are the last thing to do for the patient okay so we talk about pain first then let's say sleepless night let's say the patient also complained of um, hot body or fever so fever will be next and before sleepless night it has to be in that order degree of severity how severe is the patient problem okay so here you can write with a pencil then after everything you arrange them according to order of severity just as i say if the patient is not breathing it's an emergency and it has to come first so that's the patient problem i cannot breathe are you following so you just have to solve your breathing problem before moving on to your pain you get me because if you can't breathe right now you go you die but if you're in pain i think you can hold on a little bit i don't know if you get a scenario so mostly pain comes first because um, obviously the patient might be breathing so maybe the pain should come first then you arrange them according to how severe you find the problems okay now let's move on to allergies let's say the patient is allergic to certain um food stuff etc so you write the type of food stuff the patient is allergic to let's say granite paste and um, beans etc so here mr Ousu has no allergy so you write no known allergies no known allergies okay now let's move on to patient strength patient strength okay now you write the patient strength in relation to the patient problems so you write it in relation to the patient problems okay so now let's see what we wrote here for the patient problem the first one patient complaints of pain in the abdomen now the patient strength is basically what the patient can do to help his or her condition or what the patient has to help with the recovery okay so now let's move on patient complaints of pain in the abdomen so what can the patient do in these trying times of pain okay now this is what the patient can do patient can tell the severity of the pain and its location so this is what the patient can do to help with his recovery or to help you help him recover okay the second one patient complaints of sleepless night now what can we do or what can the patient do or what does the patient have to help with this problem okay now the patient might have told you something maybe i can sleep well when the lights are out so let's say he gave you that information so you write patient can sleep well when the lights are out okay now the third one patient is anxious now this um one um problem patient problem that 
runs through all care plans. Every patient in the hospital is anxious. Anxious about the surgery, anxious about the medical condition. Let's say this condition is going, is going to kill me and it runs through their minds every now and then. So this is one problem that runs through every patient. Every patient. So bear in mind, you can write it everywhere. In, ad- in addition to the inadequate knowledge. So these two um, problems, you can always write it somewhere because the patient is likely to have inadequate knowledge about disease condition. But not always. Some people have more knowledge, like in-depth knowledge, even more than you, the nurse. Okay. So the inadequate knowledge is not always, but then the anxious, the anxiety, it's almost certain. Okay. So let's move on to patient is anxious. Now, what can we do or what can the patient do or what does the patient have to help with this problem? So let's see. Now, the patient is willing. The patient is willing to cooperate, to cooperate with the medical team. So patient is willing to cooperate with the medical team. To help with speedy recovery. Okay, so this, if we are able to do this, um, the patient anxiety levels will reduce, okay. Now the last one, patient has seen adequate knowledge about disease condition. So we can also write patient is willing to learn more about the disease condition. So to learn more about the disease condition. Okay, so just as I told you, we use the patient problems to write your patient strengths. And the patient strength is just about what the patient can do, what the patient has, etc. Okay, now let's move here. Routine care. So here we have CPR, which is basically temperature, pulse, respiration. Okay, so the normal routine um, checking of the temperature pulse respiration is um, four hourly four hourly but then it depends on the patient okay so it depends maybe some patients these are monitored one hourly especially those um, who we are um, doing a blood transfusion for so there's maybe 30 minutes or one hourly okay so it depends on the patient so we are doing the normal here so you write monitored Monitored four hourly. Monitored four hourly and recorded. Some monitoring we also record. So same applies to the blood pressure. Monitored four hourly and recorded okay the diet the diet so let's say the patient is on a normal diet okay so let's write normal but then there are various forms of diet okay so the normal diet is the normal food that we we eat okay or maybe the patient is on a fluid diet or a light diet so it depends on what diet the patient is on. So basically, for those who have undergone surgery, they mostly are placed on light diet. So foods that are not that heavy. Okay. So we have normal diet, um, light diet, etc. Okay. So fluids. So normally we place liberal fluids here. Okay, liberal fluids. Now intake and outputs. Okay. Um, 
we have a chart known as the intake and output chart okay now if the patient has a catheter in situ it means we are probably monitoring the intake and output so here you just write intake and output monitored okay then oral hygiene okay done twice daily with toothbrush and toothpaste it depends on how often the patient does it so you just go with how, what the patient tells you so let's say the patient says it's done once daily with a toothbrush and a toothpaste okay and back then too you just go with what the patient tells you so that one to write done once daily with let's say towel um dental and water okay now you're in testing okay so you can check this from the folder so if they did any urine re for the patient okay so if it was done mm -hmm, you write. so done on admission body weight is also written in the folder okay so let's say here's 59 kilogram and activity so here it depends on um, whether the patient is on bed or always in bed or the patient can move about okay so if the patient is always in bed he writes patient is bed ridden but any patient if you observe that the patient can move about willingly about his normal duty duties you can write ambulant now bed reading can also um, you can also write passive so the activity is um, let's say passive not really bed reading but then he can do certain things so passive form of activity so it could either be bed reading like always in bed can do anything ambulance can get up and walk passive can turn around in the bed a little bit can stretch hands etc so that's what you do so if you're able to fill this part correctly you get your six marks okay guys so thank you for watching this first um, phase of the video and um, I'm glad you're able to watch to the end and for doing that I'll give you a nursing Nanda diagnosis um, 2018 to 2020 so you check below the description box and you download your nanda nursing diagnosis which is going to help us in writing and moving on to our next phase of the nursing care plan which is your diagnosis our um, objectives nursing orders interventions and evaluation okay until then see you bye